I'm going back to last year's finally, and I, I remember that I was personally impressed with the running of Fiddler and Harkinson up front for Queen's Park, who uh, seem to be always looking for that ball for the midfielders to lay off to, and uh, creating quite a bit of havoc in, in Norvan's Norvan's uh, defence. We'll see, of course, now Norvan know them. We'll see if they can hold them in check this afternoon. Larry Dill going back to defense, and Queen's Park Rangers go back to goalkeeper Brad Higgs, who throws the ball all the way up to the halfway line. Hartman gets it back there for Norvan, and Greg Haywood knocks a long ball forward. Bruce Bates in touch off Graham Slee on the far side. It'll be a Queen's Park Ranger throw in. From the throw, that's Lindsey Henderson, a key member of the Calgary Kickers march to the CSL championship last year. And the Rangers again forced to go back in defense. And in fact, are going to be forced to concede a corner kick here, as we'll see what Norvan can do from their first and, set uh, play opportunity. Good hustle there from Des Webster. Again, using experience, not allowing the defender to turn and causing causing and winning in a corner kick. And here's Barry Dearden. Oh, it's not a corner kick. Yes, yes it is. That's nice corner kick. Barry Dearden and Graham Slee in that corner, and it looks like it'll be Graham Slee taking the corner for Norvan as Dearden runs into the penalty area. Now Dearden heads back into the corner area, and Slee gets his cross. Part of the area, the header off Mike Geary's forehead winds up off the foot of Arnie Mears for Queens Park Rangers. Martin Best gets it back for Norvan. The shot by Clark Brawley blocked and finally winds up in the arms of Brad Higgs. A good shot on the turn there from Clark, did very well. He knew where he was just inside the penalty area and uh, knew that once the ball is in that area, he must try a shot, but Brad Higgs, as always, alive to collect the ball cleanly. Very experienced goalkeeper for Queen's Park Rangers, the defending Provincial Cup champions. Winner of this game will go on to represent BC at the Canadian Club Championships. Arnie Muir is trying to send Fiddler away. Danny Crouch is off his line to win it at the edge of the penalty area. Mears recovers, an offside flag goes up. And Queen's Park Rangers, uh, as you mentioned, in the, the, the club championships, champions rather, at the moment, they went through last year to represent BC at the club finals in, in Winnipeg. And I know Joe Bell was very disappointed in the performance of his team there. And hopefully if they can win today, he will be hoping to um, change his reputation there as club championships and hopefully do, do a lot better in those finals. The, the challenge Canadian title being won by Winnipeg last year on home turf. Racing into the corner is Greg Haywood for Norvan. Keeps the ball in play, gets his cross in. And Dearden just missed the little flick header there, and Martin Best recovers now on the left corner. Good pressure from Norvan. Higgs manages to win that ball in a heavy challenge at the far post. Again, showing how dangerous Ian these crosses can be. Not a high cross there, a low, hard cross, causing lots of havoc. My favorite word this afternoon, obviously, but lots of havoc in the Queen's Park defense and uh, looking to get away with it. Certainly in the first six minutes of this game, Norvan has created as many scoring chances as they did in 90 minutes against Queen's Park Rangers in last year's cup final. Steve Brown unable to win that ball and coming away is Graham Slee for Norvan. Long ball forward. As Webster trying to chase it down, it's swept away by the Queen's Park Ranger defense. And Graham Slee will have a big part to play in the performance of, of Norvan. If he's having an on, an on day, as we say, I'm sure that uh, Norvan will be very, very effective. He's a very skillful player. He reads the game well, controls the game for midfield, and also likes to shoot. This is Mike Geary. Reston trying to sweep into the right corner for Norvan. And Bates gets it away for Queens Park Rangers. Only as far as Haywood now. 
Dearden lays it off for Slee. The ball to the edge of the area. They were trying to find Brawley. Blocked. Put back in again by Gordon Dees. And a free kick given by referee Gord Rogers. Queens Park Rangers will get a chance to relieve some pressure. And Novan must keep this ball either on the ground or at least uh, waist high because of the two giant stalwarts that they have, that Queens Park have at the back, Sefton and uh, Carl Shearer, who during Queens Park Rangers' march to the Cup Final this year have just been outstanding in, in the defence and winning nearly every ball in in the air. Queens Park Rangers captain Steve Brown, and this is Mike Sefton, the big center back, knocking it ahead to Arnie Mears. Back to Brown, couldn't hold the pass, and coming away is Slee. Now this is number 11, Barry Dearden, going back into a deep midfield role. Fiddler comes up with it. Brown. Brown fights off a challenge from Dearden and loses possession with the tackle coming in, and Best knocks the ball nowhere in particular. Carl Schur, or rather Mike Sefton, will chase that down. Reston recovers for Norvan. Taking on Bates. The tackle from Dill wins the ball for Arnie Mears. Lindsey Henderson trying to sweep through midfield. And Bess goes back to goalkeeper Crouch. Ball breaks for Dearden. Dearden taken down at the edge of the area. The referee, Mr. Rogers, waves play on and sure clears out in the midfield. Greg Haywood again to Reston. This time the free kick is given. Played about nine minutes of a scoreless first half in the 1988 Labatt's Province Cup Final. Dearden. Brown gets it away for Queens Park Rangers. Henderson now to Mears and up to Fiddler. Lindsey Henderson, his pass picked off by Graham Slee, and in touch for a Queens Park Rangers throw in. Nice crowd on hand at Kinsman Stadium in North Vancouver for this cup final. I'm sure they'll also uh, not only just appreciate the game in, but perhaps the refreshments uh, over there, the blue refreshments, the bats blue as we see on the other side of the field. Yes, the sponsor, I'm sure, will be appreciated by many in the gallery this afternoon. <laughs> That's Brown. And now, Mears in the left flank. The shot goes bounding well wide from midfielder Brown from about 20 yards out. And there again, Ian, although we've said that Norvan have been on top, they've been controlling the play. This is where Queen's Park are so dangerous. I always get the feeling that when they do get the ball, in their attacking third, something can so easily happen. I know that when they played in the semi-final against Columbus, Columbus were playing the very nice cultured, controlled game, and then suddenly Queen's Park Rangers broke and, uh, and, and won the game. So th they're always dangerous, and uh, hopefully Norvan do not lull themselves into confidence, overconfidence. Certainly a very experienced team, this Queen's Park Rangers side, with so much professional experience, but also even the ones who haven't played at the professional level have had enormous amateur experience, and winning the Province Cup last year will certainly be that much in their favor as well. And most of those players are back. This is Peter Stanley's pass. It's picked off. And in touch for a Queen's Park throw-in at halfway line on right wing. 
The Queen's Park team, Ian, certainly know themselves to be winners. Uh, and just looking at this chart here, in 82, they won the Alemania tournament. In 83, they were Labatt's tournament winners, Canada Day Classic winners, Kelowna Zodiac's clinic, uh, winners, and, uh, and a number of others during 83. And so through 84, 85, 86, and then 86, 87, they know what it feels like to win and just play in a control game. And, and that, that's a tremendous advantage to have, to have that feeling as a winner. Uh, in 86, 87, Pacific Rim League winners, Metro League Division Three winners, 87, uh, Provincial Cup winners, 1987, went through to the Canadian Challenge Cup as finalists. So again, they're an experienced winning team. Haywood with a throw in for Nora Van. Reston now. And it goes back to Queen's Park Rangers for a throw. And also, Noor Van, looking at our notes provided by Metro Jurella, they also have won numerous tournaments since 1983 right through to the present, present time. So both, see, both teams and therefore both, all individuals seem to know what it's like to a winner, and I'm sure they would all like to come out winners again of the 1988 Labatt's BCSA Provincial Cup. In the past, uh, teams that win the Province Cup and represent BC at the Nationals generally have to battle with Ontario, and that's about it when it comes to deciding the Canadian Championship, but that's no longer the case. Manitoba is the defending club champions of Canada. This year's tournament is in Saskatoon, so it's no longer just a two-way battle between BC and Ontario. I think this is what all soccer people have to be aware of now. Like you say, regardless of age level or competition, it always used to be the Ontario-BC battle. Uh, now, because of the great organization of soccer throughout the country, soccer is no longer a two-way street. It's uh, very, very even. Great run by Dave Reston, but the referee blows down play just before he got his shot away and gives a free kick to Queen's Park Rangers for an off-the-ball incident, I believe. Yes, Barry did, and they're just interfering with Carl Shearer. Um, unfortunate there for that to happen because Mike did a superb weaving play and a beautiful shot that certainly gave Brad Higgs no chance in the goal. But uh, good decision by Mr. Rogers. And the whistle definitely sounded well before the shot was uh, unleashed by Reston. Brown now to Mears. Stanley starting things out for Queen's Park Rangers. Back to Arnie Mears. And it's in touch for a Norvan throw-in. Gordon Dees will put the ball back in play for Norvan. The throw-in winds up on the foot of Des Webster. He couldn't break past Lindsey Henderson. Brown recovers, and away comes Larry Dill now in midfield for Queen's Park. Picked out by Greg Haywood. And Sefton now to Brad Higgs. Played 15 minutes of a scoreless first half at Kinsman Stadium in North Vancouver. Hope you're enjoying another Cable 4 sports presentation. Martin Best. Dearden's head back to Best. Best has Stanley on him in the left corner. Gets his cross to the far post, and it's just swept away by the center back, Sefton. Excellent play by Martin Best from his fullback position there, was becoming a winger, putting a, an excellent center across, just being cleared at the right time by Queen's Park Rangers defense. Haywood from his right fullback position for Norvan. And going back to goalkeeper Danny Crouch. Off the head of Brawley. And recovered by the left back for Queen's Park Rangers. That's number eight, Bruce Bates. Larry Dill has it roll in touch off a 
for a Norvan throw in. Steve Brown finds Arnie Mears breaking. Arnie trying to find Dave Harkison making a run into the penalty area, but it's swept away by the Norvan defense and in touch off Martin Best for a Queens Park throw in. Steve Brown always in the game, uh, continually prompting from midfield. He looks very strong uh, on top of his game, full of confidence. And I know that he and Lindsay Henderson form a devastating combination in, in midfield for, Queen, for Queens Park. Now the throw in goes back to Norvan. Possession of the Provincial Cup, Ian, of course, is uh, the top honour in amateur soccer in British Columbia. And uh, it's been in operation since 1921-22 when it was won by the St Andrews Club. And uh, it was first presented to the British Columbia Football Association at that time by the Vancouver Daily Province. And uh, as you have mentioned, it's awarded annually to the Provincial Senior Amateur Soccer Champions. And, of course, for the last number of years, it's been called the Labatt's Cup, thanks to the sponsorship of that uh, company. Some great names that have won this tournament over the years. Westminster Royals, Vancouver Firefighters, and Columbus both seem to have their names down on that list for a good many times. But the very first winner, Alan, St. Andrews in 1921-22. The team, if I'm correct, that's an Andrews team because of their success and tradition in soccer are now a member of the BC Sports Hall of Fame. I'm sure Dave Fry will correct me on that one. Dave Fry, the now past president of the BC Soccer Association, but also a member of the Sports Hall of Fame through his contribution to the development of soccer. Speaking of Columbus, they were victims in the semi-final of this competition two weeks ago. Queens Park Rangers beat Columbus in the semi-final. Norvan won its way to the uh, championship game today by defeating Club Ireland in the semi-final. From the Queens Park free kick, it's flicked on and over the top by Carl Schur, moving up in the penalty area to use his height and power in the air on that set play, but it'll be a goal kick for Norvan. A goal kick taken by Mike Hartman, cleared away in midfield by Larry Dill. Reston will chase it down. Graham Slee to Dearden. Dearden, one defender to beat. Still Dearden now being pushed out into the right corner and with two men to beat. And it's a goal kick now. Two men to beat, you're quite right there. Queen's Park Rangers do defend very, very well around their own area, uh, always covering each other. Notice this on a number of occasions. And there we had Mike Sefton, wasn't it? And, uh, and Larry Dill working with each other against one Norvan, even though it was Barry Dill. Brad Higgs. And Martin Best for Norvan. Larry Dill wins the ball from him. Best gets it back again. Now Brown has it tackled away by Best. And finally, a free kick is given after the foul by Norvan's Clark Brawley. Lindsey Henderson now to Bates on the left side. He survives a challenge from Reston. And Dearden picks up the loose ball in midfield. This is Des Webster. No further than Sefton, who knocks the ball all the way down in the Norvan zone, where Fiddler chases it for Queens Park Rangers and wins it. Harkison had it knocked away before he could put the ball in the penalty area, and goalkeeper Crouch starts out for Norvan. And that's where Frank Fiddler's won his reputation, just ran 30 yards for that ball, where I'm sure the majority of players and spectators said, oh, well, that's Norvan's ball. He uh, raced 30 yards and made something out of it for his team. And this is where he's so dangerous. When you think everything's finished, there's Fiddler uh, probing around to regain possession for you. Free kick in midfield now for Norvan. End-to-end -end stuff, though, Ian. This is uh, now building up. And, of course, the crowd, as we can see over there, really enjoying it. Full house here at Kinsman Stadium. 
Graham Slee's free kick to the edge of the area. Reston, can he get his cross in? No, he cannot. The linesman's flag is up. Ivan Chabata on the far side says it was over the end line and it will be a goal kick. And who was chasing back but Frank Fiddler. Able to break past Sefton in defense. And Queens Park Rangers Lindsay Henderson starting things out. Larry Dills passed to Arnie Mears, intercepted, and away comes Norvan. This is Des Webster trying to turn past Carl Schur. Webster gets a shot in, and no problems at all for goalkeeper Brad Higgs of Queens Park. That's again seeing Des Webster shoot, move and shoot like that brings back, I'm sure, his, uh, his old days where, again, he was just superb at uh, turning people, quickness off the mark and shooting. And it's good to see him still retaining that even at his old age. Sorry about that, Des. No, no, Alan. No, it's good to see, though, because I, I like to see that experience turning and, uh, and shooting whenever we can. But the point is, Queen's Park Rangers isn't the only team out there with a lot of experience. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Peter Stanley's throw in to Arnie Mears, the former Vancouver 86er. Arnie may well wind up with the Calgary Kickers this season. There's a ball looking for Fiddler over his head and into the arms of Danny Crouch. Calgary Kickers will be closely watching the outcome of this game because it's uh, Joe Bell, the Queen's Park Ranger manager, says that the Kickers are interested in at least four of his players, in particular Arnie Mears, Larry Dill, Frank Fiddler, and Lindsey Henderson. Henderson played for Calgary last year led them on the march to the CSL title. That is Lindsey Henderson. Larry Dill being chased by Reston. And in touch on the far side for the throw in now to Norvan. British Columbia teams, Allen, enjoying good success at the national level, winning four straight Canadian championships up until Vancouver, Croatia's last title in 1985. The last two years, BC has been wiped out in the tournament, and they hope to do better here. But here's an opportunity to get on the board for Queen's Park Rangers. The shot by Brown sailing wide. Great opportunity for Queen's Park Rangers. Was that Bruce Bates that was running through on that? On the left fullback? Yes. Yeah. yeah, super run from, again, from his own defense, causing lots of trouble there. And fortunately for Norvan, uh, they were able to stop it on that occasion. And Steve Brown was the one that shot just wide, but shot without hesitation from the edge of the box. Just a little bit inaccurate on that occasion. Mike Hartman to take his team's goal kick. And that's Beats on the ball there for Dill now. Lindsey Henderson gets past Reston. And in touch off Haywood for a Queen's Park throw in. Looks like a long throw coming up from Brown. Big man up in the penalty area for Queen's Park. Headed away well by Graham Slee for Norvan. Reston fighting for that ball. Queen's Park comes up with possession. Bates play the one two, but it's in touch on the far side for a Norvan throw in. minutes left in the first half at Kinsman Stadium in North Vancouver. It's still scoreless. 
Norvan ANAF branch number 45 against Queens Park Rangers of New Westminster. Norvan in the solid blue strip, Queens Park Rangers in the blue and white hoops on the jerseys. Peter Stanley now for Queens Park. Fiddler. And Mike Geary goes back to goalkeeper Danny Crouch. Stanley, Sefton, Larry Dill gets the free kick as he was chopped at from behind by Graham Slee. Free kick not well taken. Norvan comes up with possession. Des Webster sweeps past one defender, gets a shot away just past the left goal post. And again, the opportunistic Des Webster creating havoc for Queen's Park Rangers. Yeah, sloppy, uh, sloppy taken free kick. And I see Larry Dill was not happy. He was trying to, or trying to impress the referee that he was just passing the ball to his player to take the free kick. But the referee judged that the ball had been taken, as, as did Des Webster, who latched onto it and nearly, nearly put Novan into the lead there. Fiddler chases that down on the left touch line. Trying to send Henderson away. The pass is picked off, and Reston starts out now for Norvan. And the free kick goes to Norvan. Referee Gord Rogers, well placed to make the call. And that's Larry Dill, who I think now has got that bit of frustration over here as he was involved in the in the free kick or the non-free kick, as he thought. He's now hopefully got that bit of frustration out and Gord Rogers, referee, just talking to him. So let's cool down, let's get on with the game. It's uh, Sunday afternoon, let's have a peaceful day, mate. Hartman took the free kick and this is Geary's pass, looking for Webster, cleared away by Carl Shearer. Webster fighting for possession with Dill. Dill comes up with it, then Webster recovers. Now Shearer knocks it ahead to Arnie Mears in the center circle. Mears goes back to Peter Stanley. Dave Harkison. And one back by Mike Hartman. Some complaints from the Queen's Park Ranger players there. No need for the complaints. I mean, okay, I think they're looking for interference or body checking, whatever they have in their own mind. But uh, to be expected at this level, we're going to get body contact. You're going to get uh, a little bit of pushing, but as long as it's not dirty play, I know that uh, Gord Rogers will allow the play to flow. An experienced referee, worked many Canadian soccer league games last summer at Swangard Stadium for the Vancouver 86ers, and indeed both of the linesmen today are also very experienced officials. Gordon Dees takes the throw in, looking for Gearden. Back to Dees now. Carl Schur intercepts and boots a high ball into midfield. Harkison starting out for Queen's Park Rangers. Fiddler trying to chase that down in a foot race with Mike Hartman over the end line for a goal kick. Excellent run by Frank Fiddler though from a midfield position doing a diagonal run out to the to the right wing and just unfortunately that the pass from Dave Harkinson was just a little bit too, a bit too hard but a superb run that split the defense ball went through and just a little bit uh, too much pace on it for Frank to latch on to at the end but super running super thinking Gain Hartman taking Norvan's goal kicks this is Larry Dill Arnie Mears in the left corner. An offside flag goes up from our linesman, Bob Sautel. And it'll be a free kick for Norvan. Yeah, just unfortunate there, but an excellent uh, chance that Queen's Park created for themselves. Through ball, and there was Bruce Bates again coming through from his uh, back position into an overlapping situation. Just offside at that time. But beautiful play again from, from Queen's Park coming forward. Goalkeeper Danny Crouch on the pitcher as he prepares to punt downfield for Norvan. Oh, 
Stanley goes back to his goalkeeper, Brad Higgs. This is Bates, who's run miles in the first half. Now to Sefton. And back to number eight, Bruce Bates. Away comes Norvan, Graham Slee trying to penetrate the penalty area, but couldn't get past the defense. And here's Carl Scherer in a midfield position, unusual for him, trying to carry the ball downfield. And ran into Clark Brawley. His teammates didn't help him out on that occasion by, by shouting for the ball. Fiddler. And away comes Slee for Norvan. That pass picked off by Bates. And over on the right for Peter Stanley. Brown. To Dill, working in at the right flank now. Dill gets past one defender. And finally hooks a far post cross that's headed over the end line by defender Greg Haywood. Queens Park Rangers will take its first corner kick of the day. Yeah, brilliant play by Larry Dill. They're holding onto the ball, beating two people, virtually uh, twice, and then putting over a very, very dangerous ball. The game's opened up now, Maureen. Yes, it's this, an excellent uh, we're first get, We're getting serious now. Somebody's thinking about wanting to win and score here now. This is great. Lindsey Henderson will take the corner. Set up many a goal last summer for the CSL Calgary Kickers. In swinging corner kick. Headed away at the near post by the Norvan defense, but only as far as Larry Dill, who goes back into that right corner again. This time it'll be a corner kick as it's over the end line off Graham Slee, the Norvan defender. And it looks like Dill will be taking this one from the right side. Park Rangers with their first bit of sustained pressure in the day. They've had a few opportunities on breaks, but now they're really putting the Norvan penalty area under siege with Dill getting ready for the corner. Opportunity there, but the attempt on the volley from Henderson way over the top for a goal kick. I'm sure Lindsay will be disappointed with that effort. He seemed to have plenty of time, and a man of his skill level should have certainly hit that ball a lot cleaner than he did, so I know he'll be disappointed at that. 11 minutes left in the first half unofficially, but there have been very few stoppages by referee Gord Rogers in this first 45 minutes of the 1988 Labatt's Province Cup Championship. And Carl Scherer goes back to goalkeeper Brad Higgs. Sefton, Brown, back to Stanley. Back to Brown. Looking for Harkison on the through ball, swept away by defender Mike Hartman. What a beautiful chip from Steve Brown, though. Nice control, turn, beats his man, looks up, chips the ball over, and there was Harkinson and Fiddler there, actually, who, if they had communicated a little bit more, could have perhaps made something else out of that. But S Steve Brown, certainly on top of his game today. And another opportunity for a long throw-in. Clicked on, cleared away. And an opportunity now for Norvan on a quick break as Dearden races through midfield, but Stanley comes over to cut him off. Reston now. It falls to Des Webster. Webster gets a shot in, scores! Des Webster! What a superb goal, superb goal. Queen's Park caught off balance there. Two on one situation. Des Webster did have the opportunity to pass to Barry Dearden if he wished to. Took it on his own and just ripped a shot by Brad Higgs in goal there. A superb goal. The yeah. vintage Des Webster that we saw there. He superb. Had, had two great chances earlier in this game, but he certainly buried that one. And the opening goal putting Norvan AMAF branch number 45 in the lead, 1-0 over Queens Park Rangers in this cup final. Des Webster, the veteran, getting the goal for Norvan. And hopefully we can see a replay of that one in. Coming in the 36th minute. 
Arnie Mears. Now this is Bruce Bates. Reston recovers for Norvan, being pressured by Bates. And Bates finally wins it. Arnie Mears had it tackled away. And Reston starts out for Norvan, looking for Dearden. Dearden being covered by Shearer. Dearden breaks into the right corner. This is Barry Dearden into the penalty area. Stops, waits for support. Still Dearden on the ball. Hooks a far post cross. It floats over Martin Best's head. And Norvan will start out now from the left corner. Martin Best sends it back in the area. And the shot partially blocked there as Geary came up to get the shot away and it finally floats into Higgs' arms. Very intelligent play by Barry Dearden there. Went on the break. Uh, the angle that he made for himself was a bit too fine. Instead of just pushing the ball over and wasting at that time, held on to it very confidently and waited for support from his, for his own teammate. Very experienced, uh, confident play there. This is Arnie Mears looking for Brown on a break, but the pass was picked off before it got to Brown. Lindsey Henderson recovers for Peter Stanley. Stanley now feeds Brown in the right corner. Brown, and that one floats over the top as goalkeeper Danny Crouch watches it float over the crossbar for a goal kick. Seven minutes left in the first half of this 1988 Province Cup final at Kinsman Stadium in North Vancouver. And Norvan leading 1-0. As the Norvan center back Mike Hartman gets ready for this goal kick. Fiddler. And it finally falls to Mears. Arnie Mears, good ball for Fiddler. Fiddler takes a shot, good diving save, the rebound is in. Harkison puts it in, Queens Park Rangers is all even. Yeah, there's the dangerous Fiddler, ever dangerous Frank Fiddler, latching onto that, shooting. Goalkeeper um, Danny Crouch misfielding the ball there, although it was a very, very hard shot. And Dave Harkinson hovering as always, just there to get the rebound and slip it home. That came just about two minutes after Norvan opened scoring as Queen's Park Rangers quickly levels things at one. Peter Stanley will chase that ball down with no problem. Martin Best will now try to put him under some pressure. And Mike Sefton starts out. This is Bruce Bates, the fiddler. One back by Reston for Norvan. Picked off by Sefton, now to Brown. Brown eludes a challenge from Brawley. And back to goalkeeper Brad Higgs again. What was the time of that Queen's Park goal in? Just think how many minutes apart. 36th minute for Des Webster, and I've got 38th minute for Dave Harkison. Yeah. So Queen's Park not really giving Norvan any time at all to enjoy their 1-0 lead. This is Brown again. Now Bates knocks it forward, and it'll be picked off by Greg Haywood. He tries to feed Barry Dearden. Now Fiddler has an opportunity. They're calling for a handball. The referee says play on as it bounced off Mike Geary's upper body. And the referee was quite satisfied with it as Norvan clears. One one tie, we're late in the first half at Kinsman Stadium in North Vancouver. Brown goes back to Center back and Sefton now starts things off for Peter Stanley on the right wing. Lindsay Henderson in midfield finds Brown on a run. Steve Brown looking for Mears, picked off by the Norvan defense, and now Martin Best will chase that down. Nice tackle by Dill to win it back for Stanley. Mears being chased by Graham Slee, and Mears goes back to Carl Shearer. 
His pass for Harkison, the goal scorer for Queens Park. Now Arnie Mears. This is Lindsey Henderson. In touch, the throw in goes to Norvan. Gordon Dees to put it in play. Barry Dearden. As Carl Schur chasing him in the left corner. This is Dearden. Hooks the cross to the edge of the area. It finally falls for Slee. And Dill goes back to goalkeeper Higgs. Again, Barry Dearden doing an excellent play, controlling the ball. His first touch was superb there. Again left on his own up front. The blue team could not get up to support him fast enough. He had to control it, laid the ball across to his teammate, who then uh, miscontrolled it and lost the advantage. But, so well done, Barry Dearden, again. From the throw in, Dave Reston hoofs a high ball out into the center circle. And Carl Schurer eventually wins it for Bruce Bates. Now Hartman knocks a high ball forward. Webster waits for it. Crunching tackle from Sefton wins it back for Queens Park. Now Larry Dill. Martin Best and Stanley challenging for the ball. Stanley wins the challenge. Brown. Best wins it back for Norvan and Brawley comes away. Like that Reston. Reston. Webster. Now Slee. Looking for Brawley. Swept away by the Queen's Park defense. Webster to Dearden. Two to one, Norvan. The Queen's uh, Park Rangers claiming that it might have been offside, but... Oh, no, no, beautiful, beautiful combination there between Dearden and uh, Webster. Des using his height. Uh, a little pun there, Des. But getting up beautifully to head it over. And Barry Dearden having laid the ball off in the first place, going back to collect it and just uh, lobbing the ball over Brad Higgs. Barry Dearden and Des Webster, super combination. And uh, Barry Dearden certainly deserves his goal there. Certainly classical finishing. Oh, just it's been super. a great first half, Alan. Superb. I mean, this is, this is a, as you said, this, was, this is the honor to win the cup. They're putting on a super show for us and showing us that they are the top two teams in the province at this time. And even the weatherman is cooperating after a bit of a doubtful start and half an hour before kickoff, it was threatening to rain, but there's no threat of that right now. I think that was just done on purpose, just to keep the ground nice and moist, Ian. And, uh, just seconds to go in the first half. The super event, the crowd here is super. Uh, the ground is great. Well, the ground actually, I must be a little bit careful on that because I'm disappointed with the actual standard of the ground in the midfield there, which is difficult for them to hold their feet. But uh, the, the wings are super. There's the whistle from referee Gord Rogers to end the first 45 minutes at Kinsman Stadium in North Vancouver. And an explosive final 10 minutes to that first half that produced three goals. Alan Des Webster opening scoring for Norvan in the 36th minute. Dave Harkison equalizing for Queens Park Rangers in the 38th. And Barry Dearden in the 44th minute breaking the tie and sending Norvan to the dressing room, enjoying a 2-1 lead. What do you expect in the second half? Well, hopefully we can keep up this pace. It started off very tentatively. Both teams were very tentative in the first few minutes. Then they started to open up, allowing each other to play. A little bit of physical. Uh, but the, the goals that we've seen and end-to-end -end action have just been superb. And if we can carry on like this in the second half, gee, what a, a super one and a half hours that we'll see for, for soccer. I, I hope we can keep it up. Uh, I, I think the pace that they've picked up to is quite fast now. I'm not sure whether they'll start to fade a little bit, perhaps towards the end of the, the, the second half, but uh, what, a, what, a, what a super game. Can't wait for the second half to start. Well, neither can I, and those fans on the far side will get the opportunity now to enjoy some of the sponsor's product, and we'll be back with the second half kickoff in a moment.
Welcome back to Kinsman Stadium in North Vancouver. I'm Ian Michaud along with Alan Churchard, ready for the second half kickoff of the 1988 Labatt's Province Cup Final. Norvan ANAF branch number 45 defending the goal to our broadcast left in this second half. They enjoy a 2-1 lead over Queen's Park Rangers, and it will be Queen's Park kicking off to open this second half. Some of the spectators here in the sun drenched Kinsman Stadium, and now a look at the Norvan bench. Their manager, Gil McGarva, coach John Daly, and trainer Kenny Burrell. Yeah, I, that was just a quick, quick flash of Kenny Burrell, who's been involved in oh, many, 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 many years in the development of soccer in, uh, in Vancouver area, certainly, and particularly with this Norvan club. An excellent player in his own right, in, in his own day. And along with Gil McGarver, who not only has a, has a team, but is also the president of the Vancouver Metro Soccer League as well. So that we have very committed soccer people, actually, on both benches. And, and we know that the Bell family uh, run the Queen's Park Rangers. Joe Bell and Scotty Bell, his brother, have a tremendous amount of time within the Queen's Park Rangers club. From the kickoff, Norvan now going back to goalkeeper Danny Crouch, who puffs a high ball downfield. Norvan has made at least one substitution to start the second half, and that's the man in possession of the ball right there who's come into the game. That's Jack Wendt. Young player with uh, a lot of promise and various uh, representations on BC under 18 and uh, under 16 select teams over the years. Was also a Vancouver 86 draft choice this past winter. I'm a member of the national under 16 team, Ian, if you remember, in the last uh, World Cup, youth, the World Cup that was held in Toronto last year. Now Hartman, a long ball forward for Norvan, picked off by Carl Schur. This is Bates. Now to Lindsay Henderson for Queen's Park Rangers. Harkison had it swept away from him by Mike Hartman, and away comes Jack Wemp now for Norvan. Balls to Graham Slee. Picked off, and away comes Queen's Park Rangers on a quick break. Down the right, it's Frank Fiddler. Fiddler being watched by Geary. Fiddler's cross to the far post, headed down by Mears, but wide for a goal kick. And Arnie Mears, the gentleman on the end of that cross, again having a very good, very good game so far. Uh, doing a lot of work in midfield during the first half, and now on the end of a cross for a head at goal on that particular play. But a hard worker, and again, uh, putting out everything in this cup final. Interesting about the cup, the provincial cup, Ian, that all affiliated competitive teams are eligible to enter this provincial cup that is directed by the BC Soccer Association. They first of all go into their own league competitions and, event and have their own play downs until we arrive at 18 teams for the first round of the cup round proper. And then, of course, the winner, we have the, the, the two, the top two teams at the moment playing off, and then the winner of this provincial cup will then go to represent British Columbia at the Canadian Challenge Cup which will be held in Saskatoon during October 7th to 10th, the Thanksgiving weekend in, uh, in 88. Crunching tackle there and a yellow card shown after uh, that tackle in midfield. Yeah, Lindsay Henderson being a little bit uh, too aggressive on that occasion, but well noted by Gordy Rogers, who allows uh, physicalness within the game, but uh, not collisions. And the training staff, Kenny Burrell, in to take a look at the injured Norvan player. So this year's Canadian Championship in Saskatoon, and that's again uh, October 7th. I imagine that's probably Thanksgiving weekend. That's when they usually have it. As BC will be hoping that whoever comes out of this game will return the championship to the province after a two-year absence. And perhaps a surprise result uh, to many, many people, particularly on the lower mainland in this year's playdowns, where was the, the Kamloops Herman beat 
the Croatia, Vancouver, Croatia, Ian. Uh, I know the lower mainland people were surprised, but I don't think soccer people knowledge of the provincial scene were too surprised because the fur men have done very well over the years, managed to get to semi-finals, actually, on, on two occasions. And, of course, playing on their, their home ground this particular year gave them a little bit more incentive and managed to beat Croatia 2-1. to one. Just another indication, Alan, that uh, soccer is no longer a regional game in Canada. We had national champions from Manitoba last year, and uh, the Kamloops team knocking off the former Canadian champions, Vancouver, Croatia, in the cup playdowns this year. It's no longer just Southern Ontario and the Lower Mainland and Vancouver Island that are producing soccer players. Well, I think that's right, and it's important for everyone to be aware, not, not to be just aware of their own little niche or their own little area, but be aware of what's happening in other areas as well. Fiddler de Mears, oh, and that diving shot didn't miss by much. I think the goalkeeper, Crouch, may have had it covered if it had been on target, but uh, he wasn't taking any but again, chances. again, beautiful combination, beautiful setup play, ball pushed in by uh, Steve Brown to Frankie Fiddler, who did a beautiful controlled layoff, and then Arnie Mears coming, coming through, first time shot, uh, superbly hit, just a little bit off target on this occasion, but that's, that's real soccer again, and classy soccer. And the score remains 2-1 for Norvan, the team in the solid blue strip, defending the goal to our broadcast left, Queen's Park Rangers in the blue and white hoops, the defending provincial champions, they beat Norvan 2-0 in the cup final last year, but it's 2-1 for Norvan this year, and here comes Reston. His pass to the edge of the area picked off by Shiver, headed away by Stanley. Went recovers for Norvan. That's Slee. Offside flag goes up against uh, Barry Dearden, and Queens Park will take the free kick. Mike Reston having uh, uh, an outstanding, sorry, Dave Reston having an outstanding game for Norvan so far. In the first half, he was up and down his wing, uh, becoming a winger or, or extra defender. And uh, now he's having an outstanding effect on a midfield, having slotted over to the midfield position to allow Jack Went to come in. But uh, a real non-stop runner, non-stop worker, very unselfish and also creative in, in the same time. This is Sefton, the centre back for Queen's Park Rangers, being put under some pressure and going back now to Carl Schur, back ahead to Sefton. Lindsay Henderson has Bates running to his left. Puts it in the middle for Mears. Now Mears, working down the left touch line, stops. Back to Lindsey Henderson at the halfway line. Brown to Mears. Mears couldn't sweep past the Norvan defense. And a free kick given to Norvan after Brown was doing a little pushing. Early in the second half, as the Norvan number four, Greg Haywood, gets ready for this free kick. Pokes over Dearden's head, controlled now by Sefton. And he boots it way up into the uh, Norvan bench. Again, a very careless uh, pass by, by Sefton, but of course harried by Des Webster, not allowing him to do that. And that's the way to do it. Don't let them play out gently from the back. Because once you do that, Queen's Park are very, very dangerous. Reston over the end line for a goal kick. As Barry Dearden checks the inside of his ankle after a crunching tackle at the edge of the penalty area. There's goalkeeper Brad Higgs for Queen's Park Rangers. Haywood broken up and Dill knocks it forward. In touch on the far side for a Queen's Park throw in. Some of those fans spilling over from the grandstand as you see them there in standing room or sitting room only, soaking up the sunshine at Kinsman Stadium today for this cup final. Opportunity there and Dangerous kick, I think, is the call against Arnie Mears on that overhead. Yeah, I think he, he, from what I see there, he backed into the defender to give him, he did the right thing. He tried to back into the defender and create space for himself for the overhead kick, but judged to be interfering with the defender by, by referee Rogers. But uh, superb effort, superb effort. It remains 2-1 for Norvan. As Gordon Dees knocks a high ball forward. Yes, 
Now Bates being put under some pressure by Webster goes back to his goalkeeper and Higgs controls. Yeah, Webster working very, very hard in a defensive role on that occasion. Mirrors now to Bates. Fiddler. Now Harkison. Taken away from him by Mike Hartman for Norvan. And Sefton will control for Queens Park Rangers. Bruce Bates. Arnie Mears being watched by Reston. Now Bates back on this left touch line. Lindsey Henderson chases that down in the left corner, being covered by Clark Brawley. Henderson's near post cross, controlled by uh, controlled by Haywood, I think, and over the end line for the corner kick now for Queens Park Rangers. Traffic in the penalty area. Henderson's near post cross. Knocked down by Sefton. Big scramble at the edge of the area. And it's in the arms somehow of goalkeeper Danny Crouch. He must have been very relieved. <laughs> and again, there was Frank Fiddler. Just an overhead kick. The only thing he could really do, he had his back to the goal. Overhead kick. But fortunately for Danny, he came straight at him. So, or should I say, Danny, that was excellent reading of the play in good position. Peter Stanley for Queen's Park Rangers, who are certainly enjoying an edge in play in the second half as they try to recover from a 2-1 halftime deficit. Well, Norvan at this time do look a little bit uh, tired even, even. And, uh, Queen's Park who just keep going at the same pace, marching on, seem to be just on top at the moment. This is Jack Went now to Brawley for Norvan. And Greg Haywood's pass in touch off a Queen's Park player. And it'll be a Norvan throw in. Beats for Queen's Park Rangers. Being put under pressure by Brawley. And Brawley winning a free kick for Norvan. Greg Haywood will take it. Des Webster and Dave Reston and Barry Dearden waiting in the edge of the penalty area to receive it. There's Haywood's free kick. Floats over Dearden's head. Almost a bit of a mix up there, but Sefton gets it back to goalkeeper Higgs and Queens Park controls. It's interesting too that uh, although I mentioned the big, in, the, in the first half with uh, Carl Shearer and uh, Dave Sefton there with their height controlling in, in the past the, all the high balls, Webster and Dearden have certainly put them off their play by jumping very, very well uh, for, for hair, heading, heading balls. I just hope they've still got their legs to not allow Sefton and Shearer to be controlled at the back there. Of course, if I'm drawing for Queen's Park, I hope that uh, Dearden and Webster don't have the legs to keep interfering with them at the back. Another opportunity here for Steve Brown to get one of his long throw-ins away. Sure, couldn't win it in the air as Norvan's defense clears. Clark Brawley getting that one away in very, very well. Bates chips it forward. And the referee blows down play, I think for offside, although the linesman's flag certainly didn't go up. And it'll be a free kick for Norvan. Stanley and Brown. Pass for Henderson. Had, Henderson had to do well to maintain possession for Queens Park Rangers as Mears sends Fiddler away. 
across. They were looking for Fiddler on the cross from Harkison. Over the end line, it'll be a corner kick. A great play again from Arnie Mears, picking the loose ball up in his own half, sending Larry Dill away down the right, and Frank Fiddler uh, ready to pounce on the ball in the middle, but well defended by Gord Ackerman there. But again, and, uh, Arnie Mears uh, also was in the, found himself in the penalty area, also waiting for that cross. So he played it off very well and got into the danger area, waiting to latch onto it. Near post cross on the corner. Brawley and Wendt get it away for Norvan. Webster trying to send Dearden away. Stanley taking no prisoners, knocks him down. Fiddler trying to chip the goalkeeper. Swept away and off the goal line by the Norvan defense and a bit of panic there in the Norvan penalty area. Again, and who was the man? Frank Fiddler there. Very, very dangerous, this Frank. Never leave him alone. Don't try anything tricky when he's around. 15 minutes gone, second half. Still 2-1 Norvan over Queen's Park, but Queen's Park with plenty of pressure in this second half. Henderson's cross on the corner. Far post this time. Knocked back in front. It's in! No, no, no good over try. The top. Good try, good try. Well, anyway, the, the net rippled. <laughs> It'll Mike be a Sefton goal kick. There got up very, very well to get you all excited about that. It was Mike coming around the back, getting up, using his height very, very well, and the ball just tantalizingly going over the bar for, uh, for Queen's Park Rangers. But an excellent corner kick, excellent header, and very nearly successful. Very nearly. 16 minutes gone in the second half, 2-1. Norvan AMAF Branch 45 getting ready for this goal kick which Hartman takes, leading Queen's Park Rangers, the defending provincial champions. Lindsay Henderson and Brawley, who've seen a lot of each other, in touch for a Norvan throw-in. It's a good battle, individual battle that they've had between them, Brawley and Henderson. Henderson not even not being able to enjoy the space that he usually is able to have for his team to uh, create things, and Clark Brawley have an excellent day game in closing uh, Lindsay Henderson down. Head to Went. Now to Reston in the left corner. Opportunity here with Dearden and Webster waiting in the box, but the cross will be swept away by Henderson in defense. Brawley. And a free kick given to Norvan by yeah, referee Gordon. Excellent Rogers. participation in the play there by Dave Reston. Ian started the ball off, started the playoff again from a right half position, found himself uh, because of his movement and reading of the play, following it in the left wing position. And uh, unfortunately, his cross was a little bit inaccurate from the left wing, but uh, here we go. Norvan have a free kick. Graham, Graham Slee to take this free kick. Brawley's header, no problem for Brad Higgs. <laughs> Off Jack Wimp's head. And Dees back in defense for Norvan. A well read by Gordy Dees there. Didn't commit himself to mark Larry Dill when Dave Hodgson had the ball. Covered them both. And away that time by Mike Geary. Dave Reston wins that ball for Norvan. Now Stanley for Queens Park Rangers. Free kick given there as uh, Sefton sent uh, Barry Dearden playing. Nearing the halfway point of the second half. A little bit careless there. We can't afford to not take advantage of our free kicks. A little bit misunderstanding. Uh, that's through fatigue, I don't know. But it's interesting now, Ian, that uh, Queen's Park Rangers have gradually, gradually got on top and a little bit more control play, whereas Norvan started on top. Dees fighting for that ball. There's the shot that has no, no problems at all for Crouch and a goal for Norvan. Clever play by Larry Dill, though. Saw that Crouch was just off his line, tried to float it over the top. Excellent idea, good thinking. Danny Crouch came up. Uh, 
out very well on that occasion. Now Sefton to Bates again as Queens Park Rangers now go back to Carl Schur. Frank Fiddler to Artie Mears. Mears looking for Harkison, who was offside. And Norban will take a free kick. Hard luck for Arnie there. Created space for himself. Fake to shoot. Pull the ball back for Dave Harkinson. Just offside. Crouches punt downfield, won back quickly by Carl Schur for Queens Park Rangers, but now Norvan's Graham Slee comes away. Bearden back to Slee. Nice ball to Brawley. Edge of the area, Brawley shot block, and away comes Lindsey Henderson to Mears. And broken up by Norvan as Haywood goes back to goalkeeper Crouch. And Greg Haywood there, concerned about his own team, just telling them to keep working. Let's let's play together a bit more. We're fading a little bit. Let's pick up our legs. Still a long way to go. Handball in midfield against Slee for a Queen's Park free kick. Sure now to Fiddler. Fiddler being shadowed by Geary. Fiddler gets away from him, hooks the cross in, swept away there by the head of Greg Haywood as Norvan clears. Stanley to Brown. Mears back to Brown. And again, Norvan gets it back to goalkeeper Crouch. Webster hacked down by Carl Schurer. And there, Ian, that, that's the uh, reason he had to get hacked down there. Des upset Carl because uh, Des Webster, little Des Webster, beat to the giant to share it in the air. And uh, that was uh, excellent play from Des Webster again. So showing also that Carl Shearer is being put off his normal composed game. Trainer Ken Burrell taking a look at the ankle there. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two lucky number programs now. The injured player, Des Webster. Referee Gord Rogers taking a look at the scene there. Four, six, seven. And the program number one, five, two, five, two. Please present Sam at the... And some of the substitutes on the Norvan bench looking on from their vantage point. I don't know whether our viewers can hear the, the voice just in the background, the announcing there of the two lucky program winners for the, the various prizes, but it was the voice of Alex Kemp, the secretary of the BC Soccer Association, who has put in a tremendous work along with Daryl Hughes, the registrar of the BC Soccer Association, and the, the Provincial Cup committee in arranging the play downs throughout the province and culminating in this final today. All volunteers, superb gentlemen, always committed to the game throughout the years and uh, certainly have deserved the type of game that we've seen today. This is Mike Hartman now for the free kick. It's in! And Norvan making the goal and the free kick count take a 3-1 lead over Queens Park Rangers midway through this second half. I'd love to be able to see that again but the, the ball went right across the front the front of the Queens Park Rangers I think it was Jack Went who headed the ball back in behind the defense of the uh, Queens Park Rangers who were left stranded sort of isolated frozen and Graham Slee came from from nowhere to slot the ball by uh, Brad Higgs. Uh, again, an excellent execution. Found the Queen's Park defense just completely frozen. 3-1 Norvan. We have about 21 and a half minutes on my clock, plus whatever time referee Gord Rogers adds on for that recent play stoppage. And indeed, another play stoppage now. This time, Norvan's number 10, Des Webster, down for the second time in a minute or so. So, uh, more training help for Des Webster on the far side of the pitch. But 21 minutes to try to pull back two goals. Well, I never doubt Queen's Park Rangers. I mean, we say, can they do it? It's certainly there are possibilities, and they have done things like this in, in the past. So it certainly can be done. 
And of course, it depends on Norvan now to, to keep working, to close down Queen's Park Rangers. As we know, they will continually come forward now. They have no alternative but keep coming forward, perhaps open up at the back as well to get men forward, which again uh, could give the opportunity for Norvan to come through and be dangerous as well at the other end. But uh, never doubt the ab ability of Queen's Park Rangers. We're still in with a, a super finish here. It's, it's going to be a super finish. Norvan certainly in the driving seat with a two-goal lead. But Queen's Park Rangers are not finished yet. Review how it happened as we wait for this uh, injury to Des Webster to be resolved on the far side. Webster open scoring in the 36th minute for Norvan. Dave Harkison very quickly equalized for Queen's Park in the 38th minute. And then with just over a minute to go in the first half, Barry Dearden broke the tie for Norvan. It was 2-1 at halftime. And now here in the 67th minute, it was uh, the 3-1 goal scored by Graham Slee from the free kick. Back in action, Dearden trying to chase that ball. Dearden with some good speed, wins the ball in the left corner, now waits for some support. Dearden still in there, knocks it in front. Goalkeeper Higgs manages to get it out of trouble for Queens Park after a very energetic run by Barry Dearden down the left wing. And there was that uh, breakaway in that we perhaps were looking for, and Barry Dearden using his speed to out pace Peter Stanley on the left there, laying the ball back, but Graham Slee just couldn't quite latch on to the end. Excellent play by Barry Dearden. Some warm-up activity beginning at the Queen's Park bench. We see Ian Rysdale kicking off his uh, track suit and getting ready perhaps to do some bending and stretching. As Norvan goes back again to goalkeeper Danny Crouch. Sefton for Queens Park Rangers, the big center back. Sefton again, going all the way back to goalkeeper Brad Higgs. 3-1 Norvan over Queens Park Rangers. With less than 20 minutes to go in the second half, an upset could be in the making here in this 1988 Province Cup Final. Here's a shot of some of the warm-up activity going on at the Queen's Park bench. In fact, two players are warming up now. So Joe Bell may be getting ready to make some wholesale changes to try to get those two goals that he so desperately needs. Greg Haywood for Norvan. Looking for Dearden. Swept away by Carl Schur. Recovered by number 15, Mike Hartman. Now taken away by Sefton, leads Queen's Park through midfield. Bill to Mears, he's taken down by Dees. It's a free kick, Queen's Park. And Alan, uh, you were mentioning earlier in the second half how Norvan seemed, the legs seemed to be going, they were on the ropes, but there's nothing like seeing the ball in the back of the opposition net to give you more energy. Oh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. It's, uh, and with uh, 17 minutes left, Ian, uh, to have a cushion of a two-goal two, two goal lead is, is very, very comforting. To say, don't, uh, Queen's Park Rangers certainly on the ropes, but they're certainly not out at the moment. There are the two substitutes in the pitcher getting ready to come into the game for Queen's Park Rangers. Number 15 nearest the pitcher is Ian Rysdale, and uh, just out of the pitcher now, number two is Simon Hodgson coming into the game. He's a defender. Rysdale is a forward. And Stanley is one of the two players coming off. Surprising from my, my point of view that uh, Frank Fiddler would come off. I can understand them putting another forward on, but uh, Fiddler, who has been running all over the place, creating space on the end of balls. Um, I guess Joe Bell's hoping for something. And he's got, oh my goodness there. Rysdale off the post, oh. almost uh, making Bell look like a genius yes. by scoring on his first touch, but just off the woodwork. Oh, how unfortunate that was, because he followed it very, very well indeed. Captain Brown with one of those patented lawn throws of his, away this time by Hartman, and Brown will have another opportunity for a lawn throw in. All the big men up in the penalty area waiting for this lawn throw. Flicked on to the near post. Big scramble there. The goalkeeper was fouled as he tried to pull the ball down, and it'll be a Norvan free kick. Again, the 50-50 draw winner, the number 05. 
Substitutions coming up for Norvan if uh, linesman Bob Sautel can get Gord Rogers' attention. So Norvan will make its second substitution of the day. And the pitcher there is number 18, Ken Deans. Or rather 19, Martin Best. Yeah, Gordy Dees, who's had an outstanding game, just suffering a little bit, I think, from certainly from a kick on the ankle and a little bit of cramp. And uh, John Daly, having no hesitation, no, we don't want any uh, risking business, but let's put Martin Best on, at least for a moment, to cover that position. Martin, who had an outstanding game in the first half, sees himself now uh, with 15 minutes to go. Uh, in the second half. So let's amplify on this rule about substitutions, Alan. Obviously, players can come out and go back in again in the Province Cup yes, level. A total of a total of five substitutions here, so we can go in and out. A total of just five changes. Let's put it that way: five changes from either team. What would FIFA have to say about that? For a FIFA competition, they would say you would have to restrict that to two. <laughs> Reston for Norvan. Couldn't break past Brown, who gets it away for Queen's Park Rangers. Brysdale trying to put the Norvan defense under pressure. Geary gets it away to Best and back to goalkeeper Crouch. This is Jack Went on the far side. Uh, it's the way to do it. Jack Wentz getting the ball and running at defenders. That's the way to, uh, to do things out there. Now Dearden tried to do the same. Finally, Queen's Park was able to get it away. Rysdale trying to send Mears away. Reston comes up with the ball for Norvan. And again, Norvan goes back to keeper Danny Crouch. And Greg Haywood goes right back to his goalkeeper. This time Crouch tries it out on the left side for Best. Dearden chesting it down. Slee hacked down over there. I, the I, I must say I'm impressed with Jack Went right now. Ian, he's just, uh, what do we say, an old head on young, young shoulders. I mean, this is the, the most composed I've seen him play in this, uh, this senior soccer here. He's, he's just having a, a super game, running at defenders with the ball when he can't turn and run, just being composed. Excellent. And uh, I think it's congratulations to the Norvan coaching staff who've allowed him to build that confidence in their team. Larry Dill now to Sefton. Hartman will let that ball roll into his goalkeeper's arms, and Danny Crouch will start out for Norvan. Now Arnie Mears now has pushed a little bit. Uh, I guess Joe Bell, the coach of Queen's Park Rangers, has pushed Arnie Mears a little bit further forward than his deep-lying role to see if he can pull one out of the bag. Certainly capable of it. Can he do it today? Carl Schur. Head now to Lindsey Henderson. Larry Dill on a run through midfield. Now Harkison. Back to Lindsey Henderson. He's being put under a lot of pressure by Graham Slee. Finally, Slee and Henderson still going after the ball, and the referee blows down play eventually and gives Queen's Park a free kick after that battle. The winner of the 50 50 goal. Getting very excited by one or two off the ball happenings uh, in. This referee Gord Rogers has a word with a couple of Queen's Park players on the far side as we await this free kick. Well, with 10 minutes to go, a little bit of frustration is setting in. Fatigue is also setting in. The team that's uh, on the losing end at the moment trying to push forward, perhaps feeling a little bit frustrated, things not going their way. And it's up to Gordy Rogers now, the referee, very experienced referee, to keep things under control, and I'm sure he will. He sees things happening off the ball and also on the ball with the assistance of Ivan Shabada and the yellow flag and uh, Bob Sotel on this line too. 
Drysdale powering that one over the top. Pity about that because there was an opportunity. It seemed to be a wild, a wild slash at the ball instead of a perhaps a surgeon-like slice at the uh, at the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, do you? Yeah. But that was a pity because it was a clear-cut chance and he just didn't take advantage of it. And that's obviously what he's in the in the game for to take advantage of those kind of things. Good shot a moment ago of one of the hard-working officials in this game. That was linesman Bob Sautel on the picture a second ago. The other linesman, Ivan Chabata, the referee, Gord Rogers, and all three very experienced officials. Lindsey Henderson. And Danny Crouch will let Lindsey Henderson take shots like that all day. Uh, Lindsey, again, just getting, uh, slipping his, the harness away from the harness of Clark Brawley that he's had around his neck virtually all afternoon, and allowing himself to space to shoot, and perhaps a little bit hurried there, knowing that Clark was perhaps stepping on him. What would a soccer game be without a dog, Alan? A dogless soccer game. <laughs> Got to let that dog off its leash and <laughs> chase the ball before this game is over sometime. Simon Hodgson covering Webster. It's over the end line for a goal. There, yeah, once again, we have the Barry Dearden uh, out jumping Carl Shearer on that occasion, allowing the ball to go through, and Des Webster having a hurried shot, but uh, the right thing to try and do. But uh, Des Webster, Barry Dearden have outstanding games, and of course, uh, Dave Reston in midfield now having an absolute superb. Superb game. The cog of the Norvan machine, I would say, Dave Reston at the moment. This is Dill, covered by Went. Now the ball into the penalty area, and the referee's whistle sounds. And a free kick is being given. By referee Gord Rogers. Yes, quite right. A little bit of wild play there. The whistle stopped the game. The goalkeeper stood still. The defense, the attack stood still. And the ball ended up in the goal. Of course, uh, Queen's Park Rangers a bit concerned. Perhaps, perhaps Rogers should have let the, the play continue and therefore give them a goal. But the right decision, and any na and nastiness creeping in in the last few minutes. From that free kick, it's off the crossbar yet again. Two times off the woodwork now for Queen's Park. Arnie Mears was the unlucky forward on that occasion. This is Brown. Rysdale. The shot into the arms of goalkeeper Crouch. Good shot by Hawkinson there. Well laid off by Ridesdale. And Crouch uh, collects it very cleanly. Eight minutes left on my stopwatch. The referee may well add two or three minutes because of the uh, two injury stoppages in this second half, both involving Des Webster. But time, a big enemy of Queen's Park Rangers who trail three to one. The Norvan ANAF. Throw in from... Greg Haywood, Lindsey Henderson, still Henderson, and Crouch not able to win it, the loose ball cleared oh. away and off the goal line by Hartman. Henderson creating the uh, the pass for Mears, Mears slipping the ball, or trying a shot, sorry, and the ball rebounding to Hawkinson, taking his time, bit too much time on that occasion, and Hartman was able to get across and clear the lines. Another chance, goodness, two goalposts are blocked on the line. What do Queen's Park Rangers have to do? You may find out here as they have another scramble in the penalty area. This time, Wendt gets it away for Norvan. Brown gets it back for Queen's Park. Anderson taken down by Greg Haywood. It'll be a Queen's Park Rangers free kick. Dangerous area just outside the upper left corner of the penalty area. Referee Gord Rogers, as usual, right on top of the play. And the big man, Sefton and Shearer, both in the penalty area as Anderson sends the cross to the far post. The goalkeeper gets his hands to the ball. Over the end line, it's a corner kick, Queen's Park. Well, all the pressure now on in the Norvan, Norvan end. With six minutes to go, Ian. Queen's Park Rangers uh, playing on. What do they have to do? Two goal posts just over the crossbar. Cleared off the line. Corner kick here. Flicked on just past the post. And again, panic in the Norvan penalty area, but the panic is relieved with a goal kick. Uh, 
Uh, Queens Park Rangers have certainly had enough free kicks and corner kicks in this game. They're getting plenty of practice on their set plays. Unfortunately, Norvan's getting plenty of practice at defending against them. <laughs> That's what the game's all about, isn't it? Attack against defense all the time. Both teams here, it's been an outstanding game. Both teams going out to score goals, to attack, not to stop each other. Uh, if, they, if we stop them scoring, we won't lose attitude, but going out to try and score more goals in the opposition. Super philosophy has been a, a very exciting game. Mike Sefton. Header into the area. And Crouch is there to make the save. One-way traffic for the last 20 minutes. Dave Harkinson there just being foiled in his attempt to slip it by. Crouch being on the line and the ball very thankfully coming straight at him. Five and a half minutes left on my stopwatch and it remains Norvan three, Queens Park Rangers one. Most of the fans here at North Vancouver's Queens Park Stadium, or make that North Vancouver's Kinsman Stadium enjoying the score line, I would think. Not only that, Ian, but they must have enjoyed the game as well. It's been a super, a real cup final, real good soccer being played from end to end stuff, good constructive play being played through midfield, excellent shots, superb goals, um, missed opportunities, hard luck on many occasions, ball hitting the post, cleared off the line, a real soccer game, a true, a true cup final, and uh, everybody should be happy. The weather's been great. I'm sure the BC Soccer Association is very happy, and... Uh, Hopefully Labatt's have been happy as well this afternoon. Free kick given Queen's Park in midfield. Lindsay Henderson will take it. The dynamo of the Queen's Park Ranger midfield. And again, all the big men up in and around the penalty area. Looking for Shearer. Mears couldn't get a shot, and a free kick is given. I think dangerous kick that time. Yes, dangerous head there. Da sorry, dangerous, uh, dangerous play there. The ball being head height and someone in the area going to head the ball, and if the foot goes up there, then it's very, very dangerous play. But, uh, I'm sure not intentional by Arnie Mears. He was trying to do the correct thing for his team. But on that occasion, Gordy Rogers, referee, says dangerous play, indirect kick. Foot race, Webster trying to put pressure on the Queen's Park defense, but the Rangers get it back to goalkeeper Brad Higgs. Martin Desk's ball forward, Henderson waits for it, wins it. Brown, Hartman for Norvan. Referee Gord Rogers says play on, and Lindsey Henderson holds at the halfway line on left wing. And in touch. Brown to take the throw in. This is Brawley. Henderson wins the ball back for Harkison. Now Sefton couldn't get past the Norvan defense. Brown keeps the ball in. And puts it in touch off Brawley for a Queen's Park throw in. Substitution coming up for Norvan with less than three minutes to go on my watch as number nine, Mark Roach, enters the game, replacing the battered Des Webster, who's been in the wars today. A superb game. It covered a lot of the ground, non-stop running, jumping in the air, harassing the central defenders of Queen's Park Rangers and scoring a superb opening goal for for Norvan, Des Webster's had uh, a true captain's game for his team this afternoon. Bates goes back to goalkeeper Higgs. Risedale chasing that along with Best. Best gets there first for Norvan, goes for a tumble. The ball is in touch. It's a Queen's Park throw. Ball at the edge of the area. Falls to Harkison. Couldn't break through the defense. Roach gets it away. Anderson recovers for Queens Park. Anderson being pressured by Reston. Anderson gets it over on the right side now. Ball into the area from there. 
Great opportunity for Mears, but the whistle of referee Gord Rogers penalty sounds, kick. and it's going to be a penalty kick for Hands. After that opportunity for Queens Park Rangers, and who knows, we might have a miracle finish yet, Alan. Right. Uh, Mike Hartman there, I can't quite understand what happened there with Mike. Uh, there seemed to be no real danger. There was himself and Clark Brawley and Mike Geary there, ready to, hand, to uh, head the ball away, and he decided to stick his hand up. But uh, perhaps that was uh, mental fatigue. Here we have uh, Dave Harkinson, I think it is, Ian. Uh, an opportunity to make it 3-2 with... Less than a minute in stopwatch time, plus whatever injury time there is. It's 3-2. Harkinson on the penalty kick in the 90th minute. Well, that set us up for an exciting injury time uh, finale. Hey, guys! And only Gordy Rogers, referee, knows uh, exactly how much he, he's going to allow for stoppages in the second half. I don't think it's too much. Just those two stoppages involving Des Webster injuries are the only things I can remember that would uh, give Mr. Rogers any cause to add time on. We have 10 seconds left in stopwatch time, and Norvan will be happy to let as many seconds kick away as they can before Crouch punts downfield. And we're now into time added on. Alan? And let's see how much time Gord Rogers does add on. As Carl Scherer goes back to Brad Higgs. Every time Queens Park gets the ball, they know it could be their last possession. Slee gets it away for Norvan. Scherer will try. High, long ball forward. Rysdale waits for it. Again, Norvan gets it away. This is Roach. Brown recovers for Queens Park. Best gets it away. Flicked on by Rysdale for Mears. It's in! Uh, offside, but offside. the offside, offside play offside. goes. Yes. And Queens Park Rangers will go over and have a word with linesman Ivan Shabata on the far side. You see just in the background of the picture there a couple of players, Larry Dill among them, surrounding linesman Ivan Shabata. Referee Gord Rogers goes over to rescue his linesman. But the flag was certainly up. And Queen's Park Rangers, with a minute of time added on, now expired. And Lionsman Shabata, no hesitation in raising his flag, as he shouldn't have, and uh, certainly raised it before the ball was slotted into the goal. It Difficult decision to make as a linesman at this time of the game, but uh, we have to make those un, un, um, what's the word? unkind decisions. We played 80 seconds of time added on. And the referee may add on a little more time because of the stoppage during that little incident. Haywood back for Norvan. Miss kicks the his attempted clearance. Handball is called as he stumbled on the ball of lying on the ground. Great opportunity here. Free kick in a dangerous area for Lindsay Goodness. Henderson. What a finish. What a finish. 3-2. Norvan leading Queens Park, hanging on by their fingertips. Lots of unmarked men in that penalty area. Lots of unmarked men. A lot of big guys again coming forward. Shearer and Sefton, the two giant center backs, positioned at the far post for this Lindsey Henderson free kick. Beautiful chip. Away by the, key, by the Norvan defense. And an opportunity for Brawley on a break through midfield. As went in the middle, Brawley. Pass is picked off by Dill. We played two minutes and 20 seconds of time added on. Free kick given by referee Gord Rogers to Queens Park Rangers. Needless to say, it's quickly taken. Too quickly, the referee is going to make them retake it back at the place where the original foul took place. Two minutes and 40 seconds of time added on so far. 3-2, Norvan over Queens Park. Roach gets it away. Brown sends it back into the area. And the referee's whistle sounds. Some pushing, I think, by Mears is the call, and it'll be a free kick for Norvan. Three minutes of extra time gone. Ooh, what a finish. Hope they've got plenty of tape rolling down in the truck. Who knows how much longer we're going to have in this. <laughs> if Queens Park should pinch a goal and tie it up, we'd have 30 minutes of overtime to settle this game. Hartman finally takes the free kick and gives it to goalkeeper Danny Crouch. 
Went fighting for possession with Sefton. Or rather with Carl Scherer, who finally boots the ball forward for Queens Park. Clark Brawley, back to Scherer. Now Henderson. He wins a free kick as he was followed by Dave Reston. Beeks will take the free kick for Queens Park, and he's the only Queens Park player, aside for goalkeeper Brad Higgs, on his own side of the halfway line. There's his floating ball to the edge of the penalty area. Reston for Norvan being put under pressure by Henderson. Henderson wins the ball for Queens Park Rangers. Away by Brawley. Went. Now Dearden. A three-on-two break for Norvan. Dearden has went to his right and Slee to his left. Tried to feed Slee. Broken up by Bates. Henderson now. Four and a half minutes of time added on have expired as Risedale tries to feed Harkison at the edge of the area. Risedale broken up again by the Norvan defense and they get it away anywhere. Went chests it down for Dearden. Another three-on-two chance for Norvan. Dearden Trying to feed Slee. Volleyed away by goalkeeper Higgs. Brawley, Dearden, and all the way down over the end line. That'll kill off a few precious seconds. I just heard Brawley ask referee Gord Rogers how much time is left, referee. He said one minute. Be a long minute that will be for Kenny Burrell on the bench. We've already played five minutes of referee's time added on. Brown runs into a brick wall, gets a free kick though. Another chance for Queens Park Rangers. And needless to say, every blue and white hooped shirt in the place is in the penalty area with the exception of the one who's going to take the free kick. Well, this must be the most exciting finish here we've had to a provincial cup final in many years. Over the top, corner kick. We played 50 seconds of the one minute Gord Rogers said was left in the game. Linesman Bob Sautel looking on from the touchline. Corner kick from Dill. Flicked on, near post, traffic jam, it's off the crossbar. Over the end line, some Queens Park Rangers were putting their hands in the air, signaling a goal. Injured Norvan player, and it's going to be another corner kick eventually. Six and a half minutes of time added on. Reminds me of the uh, CSL playoff game last year between Edmonton and Vancouver. <laughs> there's the corner kick, and there's the final whistle to end this very dramatic 1988 Province Cup championship game. Norvan's ANAF branch number 45. Celebrations on the field. They have taken the title away from last year's holders, Queens Park Rangers. In a very exciting cup. Well, a super game, Ian. I'm delighted not just for Norvan and sorry for Queens Park Rangers, but uh, delighted for the number of fans that we've had down today, the, uh, the performance we've seen from both teams on the field, the superb goals. It's just been an ex a beautiful exhibition of soccer and just shows of what uh, exciting soccer can be produced by by senior amateur teams in British Columbia. Superb afternoon for everybody. Full congratulations to Norvan, the 1988 winners, and we'll look forward to supporting them in uh, October, and hopefully they will we'll bring the, the cup, the National Club Championship Cup home to British Columbia in October. I mentioned that CSL playoff game last year, and I think perhaps we should just pick up that point. In that game, you'll remember it was a 1-1 tie between Vancouver and Edmonton. Vancouver scored a penalty kick in the 90th minute to take a 2-1 lead, and there was at least six minutes of referee's time <laughs> added on by referee John Meachin as the fans bit their fingernails. And here we had a penalty kick in the 90th minute that made this a one-goal game, and we had another six and a half or seven minutes of time added on and had everyone at the edge of their seats here at Kinsey.